Hello, this is Greg Allison with Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you on the 15th of April, 2020. Yeah, normally it would have been tax day, except this year's kind of unusual. So I'm going to be talking to you about winners and losers. Who are the winners and losers and what's going on in our society today? And what does it mean? And what power do you have? So I'm coming to you next to my log barn, but I think we'll just do a little walking and talking. Yeah, we're showing the signs of spring here. Look, all the trees are leafing out real nice. Swamp is still here. But uh, it got really cold last night. I know some of you people are still dealing with snow. But you know, hey, I'm in Alabama, the heart of Dixie, albeit eight miles south of the Tennessee border here. But you know, it is pretty cold. It got down to 33 degrees last night. And that could have been a frost temperature had it not been for being so breezy. I don't believe we did get any frost, at least not here. But it could have. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about is, like I said, winners and losers in our current situation. And the control you might have over that, and there is some of that, more than you might imagine. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people have been unsubscribed from my channel, or their notification levels have gotten reduced, just somehow strangely, from the powers that be, the people that love us. <laughs> you know what I mean so please do make sure you're still subscribed check the notification bell and bang all bang the notification bell bang all and because I got a lot more to talk about a lot more to cover I would have liked to have done more videos but I've been exceedingly busy here uh, the last few weeks I'm really behind on a lot of key things and so it's really hard for me to find time to, to do video it's even hard for me to find, find time to sleep right now I'm so busy and I do have some other videos I've been promising to get out, including something on this 5G topic, which I'm going to put on Galactic Grid, since it's going to be more of an engineering discussion. But I will definitely mention it here and, and let you know about it. So, winners and losers. Oh, by the way, do check out my garlic coming up here real good. Yeah, I got about time to do some more weeding. I've been planting. We planted some onions and some turmeric a little bit late. Uh, like I said, it's been a stressful year, a lot going on. It's just been hard to get ahead of things. I have got my cover on my greenhouse again. And I did it just for all the storms hit. Because I did not want uh, that greenhouse unprotected with stuff lying around potentially. It's done pretty good. That's a two-year cover now so far. It's rated for three. I hope it can make more than three. I hope it can make four or five since I'm keeping it covered a good bit of the hotter more sunlight intense months with that shade cloth. Hopefully it'll buy me something. We shall see. Uh, in any event, back to, oh yeah, please check my links below to support my channel. Uh, you really do need prepping supplies now because you don't know what the feed availability is going to be in the long term. I would urge you to get things now and get it while the getting's good. It may seem like a long term thing, but you may be thankful for going ahead and getting those things now. So check with prepwithgreg.com for long-term food storage and other prepping supplies. Uh, for a month's supply, you get $100 off. Prepwithgreg.com. You need seeds for growing your garden. And it is planting time. And now's the time to get them. And again, you need to get ahead of the curve because people are buying seeds out in a hurry. Because everybody's waking up. A lot more people are now. We're all preppers now. <laughs> Suddenly, it's not the tenfold hat exercise anymore. Everybody's getting serious with it. Especially those toilet paper preppers, right? <laughs> TP preppers. Anyway, so do check out uh, my Patriot Supply. And uh, for the seeds, check out uh, True Leaf Market. Actually, my papers, Patriot Supply does have some heirloom seeds. Check them out for that. But True Leaf Market has a lot wider selection. They tell you how to grow what you grow. They also have supplies for growing microgreens, which you can do in your house. Especially for those of you that live in a city uh, and don't have this kind of availability to you. And I, hey, I still grow microgreens <laughs> in this garden. I can grow a lot of food that way. Check my videos down at the bottom of my channel where I've covered that. And of course, you may want worms. www.greengregs.com because you don't know how long you're going to be able to get to the store and buy fertilizer these days. All that said, back to winners and losers. Our world has had a lot of disruptions. It has changed in many ways. And some of the changes just may never come back the way they used to be. Um, what have we seen? There's been a trend in our society toward putting smaller businesses out of business. There's been a trend in our society 
of things getting bigger and bigger. The Walmarts put out uh, the, the small stores. Uh, Amazon.com put out a lot of smaller stores and they're shipping and everything. Uh, they've drove a lot of small, small businesses out of business. This thing that's going on now is further driving that trend. It is driving all the small operators out of business. And on the surface of it, you would think that the winners would be uh, Jeff Bezos and, for various reasons, uh, Bill Gates. Because Bill Gates has certain things he would like to push as solutions to these things we're dealing with. And unfortunately, he still has, I think, 330 million shares in Microsoft and Teams. Is, Microsoft Teams is one of the bigger uh, work-at-home collaborative engineering, collaborative work uh, type tools that's out there. Uh, I'm not in favor of doing anything that gives these guys any extra advantage. So we'll talk about that. The... Um, with all the shutdown of so many businesses and restaurants, but you know, and Bezos is trying to, to wedge out the small farmer too, because he's trying to he he bought at Whole Foods, and then they started selling monosano stuff through Whole Foods, <laughs> as if it were organic. And yeah, well, he just changed the label on the same old junk, apparently. And then he, they're trying to grow food in the in these fa you know big tall factory farms in the city. We're trying to grow, um, and then he wants to have the direct distribution straight to the people, you know, cut out the, the stores and places like that. He's trying to, um, well, and then Bill Gates, has a, he has patents and stock in two separate artificial meat uh, businesses. You know, like the uh, stuff that's been sold, it's, uh, what do you call it? That artificial mystery meat, it's not a meat, <laughs> not a real meat. Uh, and a lot of your, uh, the impossible burger, yeah, that thing. Yeah, well, I have no interest in trying that, my friends. So, uh, here's what I urge you. We now have the chance to turn this around ourselves and become the winners, or to be better winners than we would have been otherwise. Because there's a basic tenet of economics in a, in a free market society, and that is you vote with your dollars. When you can choose what you buy and where you get it from, you are voting with your dollars. Each and every dollar you spend is a vote for whoever and whatever you spend it on. So that's what you need to think about. You are actually choosing winners when you vote. You have a choice in this process. And here's what I urge you. I urge you to buy local. To buy as much local as you can. Support your small local businesses, the stores, the farmers especially, uh, anybody that's producing things locally, local factories even, local producers, because that's what we need for a resilient economy. Shipping things halfway around the world for somebody to, to manufacture it and ship back here is bad on the environment, uh, it's a lot of logistics, and is it not resilient at all. Plus, we are empowering and enriching people and giving them the economic means to build engines that are arrayed against us in an economic <coughs> or <coughs> fair kind of situation, if you know what I mean. So it's a economic game of competition that we're facing and it might go beyond economics. I've done some videos, what, four and five months back talking about China and talking about the threat they pose to this world and what we're up against with them. This thing that happened might have been, might possibly been something they were developing, might have possibly been something that got loose accidentally. Whatever the case is with that, it is loose and it is now upon us. So we've got to figure out how to deal with it. Now it might be that they are the loser in regards to the economic side of it because suddenly we realize that putting all our uh, resources in one place, building everything. America won all the wars it ever won through attrition by outproducing the enemy. When suddenly we are not the producer, it puts us in peril. That is no way to maintain your strength as a nation to not be a producer. Now, you can always question what it is we produce and how we produce it. And, 
and the impact it may or may not have on the world. That's a different discussion. But from a pure strategic standpoint, from a defense of your nation, you need to be able to produce everything that you may require. And go figure what that means. It usually means, in a modern society, a large production base. And it usually needs, you need to have one better and stronger than your adversaries. So we had to surrender that at our peril and at our risk. So China may be a loser. This may be a loser. However, China suddenly still has all that production capacity and they might decide it's time to go aggressive. They've been assuming something of aggressive posture. I assume they wanted to uh, get more chess pieces in place, but if they're seeing all this slip through their fingers, they might just go. They might go for it. They might go for it toward the end of this year, like around Christmas, December, when we're laid down more here. That would be a time I would be concerned about. I would be concerned about an attack on our power grid. And I'm going to cover that more in another video. I'm going to devote a at least one video specifically to that and why I'm really concerned about that particular aspect. So what can you do? Well again, I've covered what, uh, that you can develop your own business to, to survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. You, you need your own economy, your own means of producing for yourselves. The reason I am here and the reason I did all this is I asked myself many years ago, what could I do on my own two feet, on my own two acres to make a living? And worms was the key answer. Gardening is also a part of it, but worms was the key answer. And worms work. <laughs> I just did a video on that under my quarantine living section. And I didn't get a lot of views. I'm kind of surprised. Guys, you need to look at that video. Worms work. But my first video, talking about how to make a living on quarantine living, you know, I, I catered to the fact that a lot of you guys don't have any of this. A lot of you guys live in an apartment in a city. So I talked about courier services. And guess what? Courier services are booming. I really forecast that. I forecast a lot of things that, you know, about what's coming. At the very beginning of the year, I talked about the 2020s and what could really could come at us. And man, it's come fast and furious. Holy smoke. Um, I've talked about China. I've talked about this uh, bug that's going around before hardly anybody else talked about it. I was talking about that back in January. I believe the, I think my first video on that was probably two or three days before Wuhan shut down. So pay attention. I see things. I know what's coming in a lot of ways. I can see things, understand things because I think things through. I look at trends and data and I try to analyze objectives, motives, material and motives and means and what's, what could happen. And that's what informs me to know how to prepare, to keep my eyes wide open, my head on a swivel. And that's what I try to help you do. Keep your eyes wide open, head on a swivel. So I, when I see these things, I try to bring them to you. Uh, but most of all, again, you can be a winner. And here's where I think the winners need to be. The winners need to be the small businesses. The winners need to be decentralization. We need to vote with our dollars and support the local farmers, the local producers, our friends, our neighbors, our family. That's how we rebuild our communities. We need to form communities. We need to form our tribes. Go to how 5 space at AOL.com. We're working that. And we'll work that more. I've got a few big things I've got to knock down. Some people are wondering why I haven't sent anything out on it yet. It'll be coming. So the tribes are going to be a central part of what we're doing here. Um, because we've got to have our own communities. We've got to have our own resilience. I don't believe we can count on Big Brother and Bigger Brother and the answer is some people. You know, uh, Gordon Brown, previous Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, UK, says, oh, we need a temporary world government to deal with these problems. Temporary? you got to be kidding me. We know darn well that wouldn't be temporary, and I don't agree with this a solution one bit. We don't need that. We need less of that because that always invites trouble and control. It's what we don't need. Decentralization. Now, there's some things that, you know, we may have some areas that, you know, we would continue some degrees of centralization and large distributed systems because 
internet can really play a big role in working at home and getting information out and sharing it like we're doing here with this video and like I do with my Wednesday night Woden's Working World sessions which we're going to have one of those tonight because I'm really realizing that the community is very much needed right now when everybody's uh, kind of squestered away in their homes uh, we really need to share some time together so we're going to do that again tonight hopefully I get this video posted up well enough in advance that you can get a chance to look at it before we get do that session 9 p.m. Central Time Wednesdays that's just going to be a live open chat where we can talk that's the whole purpose the community it's just to build this community that's who we are we're a community we're a family so that's what it's all about so once again the winners well you get a vote in that and you vote with your dollars you vote with what you do and what you say and sometimes you vote literally and you vote in the discussion space of the world get the ideas out there the memes get talking let people understand what we need to do and decentralization is really the key quit going and buying all this junk from the big box stores go more and more to the smaller outfits like I said the internet might be critical so we got to support some of those systems but we might find we can select those that are less inclined toward the big centralization if you know what I mean uh, globalism is not the answer so let's do that let's support the smaller farmers the smaller producers the, the smaller local factories the people that are doing things making things building things in your communities let's support them as much as possible and you know as much as I hate to admit it you can actually start businesses through other things like well, there's Spotify, Shopify, excuse me, Shopify. There's, uh, you know, mostly bringing in Chinese junk, so, but there's ways around that. There's also Amazon.com. You could actually become a seller through Amazon and have your own little business. That's one way you can survive in these times. But yeah, at least it's you selling it, not them, but it does go through their network. So, yeah, Bezos does have a one good thing. It's his vision for space. But uh, this control and putting all the small guys out of business, I don't agree with. He does, though, enable a lot of smaller uh, providers through his network. And given that the brick and mortar seems to be going away, things like that might be part of the answer. Uh, there's also Etsy. Etsy is uh, one that you might go to. So there's different things. Well, I'll talk about some of that more in uh, a future edition of Quarantine Living. And well, with some other topics I'm going to cover there. But once again, decentralization, vote with your dollar because you get to pick the winners and you can be one of the winners. If we all work together and collectively work together to vote with our dollars for the things that make the most sense, we will come out ahead because there's a lot more of us than there are of them. So who are going to be the winners? You get to choose. <laughs> and please choose well. Thank you. And I appreciate you watching. Later tonight. Bye.